Hey everybody, my name is Jeff Bull, Manager of Developer Advocacy. Hi, I'm Sunny Dua, I'm a Director of Product Management at uh, Cisco App Dynamics. It's really good to have you here, Sunny. Um, we've been talking a lot today with, uh, in the various conversations I've had with people about um, topics that I think are right up your alley. And one of the conversations I had just before you and I sat down uh, was a, uh, with a partner who was talking a lot about multi-cloud and mm -hmm. sort of in the vein of the cloud, what we were really getting at is data. There's so much data and feeds of data, telemetry that comes from all these different plates, places, these different sources, it can be really hard for a customer to make the right decisions about how to run their business. And that, for, in that group's case, it was about multi-cloud, but really, I want to take a step away from just one thing. And I think that's kind of, kind of up your alley. So I, what I wanted to start with with you is, how is thing, uh, FSO, how, are, how is the idea of observability with products like AppDynamics or ThousandEyes, and I believe that there's something new that we really want to talk about mm -hmm. here, how is that being looked at from your perspective, and what are we doing with the idea of observable data and, and collecting that? Yeah. No, first of all, you, Jeff, thank you for having me. And you're spot on on the fact that multi-cloud is a trend which nobody can neglect anymore. I'd right? gone on the days when people were like, on-prem will be gone, everything will be in the cloud, and guess what, there's no longer any data center in the world. I mean, it's funny that over the past four years, I've seen new data centers being built up and new workloads coming up. And at the same time and at the same pace, companies like AWS and Google and Azure are growing, which basically means that digitization is really happening, right? It's happening across the board, across different countries, across different communities, which essentially means that applications are changing and they're evolving every day. Gone are the traditional applications, they're still there, they're not gone. Uh, if you talk about modern applications, microservices space, they're still there, right? Things are becoming serverless now. But guess what, an application really, which is a business service to a customer, consumes of all, consists of all of these. There are on-prem parts, there are things in cloud, and now things are running on edge as well. Mm -hmm. So it's becoming highly complex for customers uh, to observe all these endpoints, or all these clouds, as I call them, in a multi-cloud world. And the challenge is that, if, even if you have like 10 or 15 or 20 tools, all these tools were designed with a framework of a domain or an expertise. It could be a logging domain, it could be for metrics, it could be for tracing. Mm -hmm. And as you look at our customers, they have been living in silos for years. They have multiple different silos, taking care of databases, of applications, and so on and so forth. That worked when you were running in a public cloud environment, or private cloud environment, in your own data center, you're managing your own mess, <laughs> as I call it. But as soon as you open up your data center and your applications and make them mobile and then they move across these uh, universe of multi-cloud and become distributed in nature, now you have dependencies which, which was not there in the private cloud world. You want to have a full view of your application right from the lens of business because just infrastructure or just an application, whether it's Java or Go or Ruby or Python, does not matter, what matters is whether it is supporting a business need mm -hmm. of digitization. And actually, if I could interject mm -hmm. for just a quick sure. check, something you just reminded me of is, uh, years ago, before I joined Devon, I was in, in sales as an SE, one of the things we were, we were all sort of talking about is the concept of like shadow IT. Mm -hmm. Like how we, how we even got to the place of having the multi-cloud yep. sort of organically as opposed to strategically was like the shadow IT. And we all sort of thought about it in a very, kind of an antagonistic way, like, oh my gosh, we've got to stop that. And I, what I love, I think where you're going with this, and something I really am enjoying is, we've all sort of moved away from that, and we don't think of it, and by and large, I believe, we don't necessarily think about it so much as like, we've got to stop that from happening. Mm -hmm. We're starting to become more comfortable with, that needs to happen because a problem wasn't getting solved for those people. That's true. And so now we're at a point, say, you need to be able to, your, our people and our businesses, these customers, need to be able to do what they need to do. Mm -hmm. How can we help take the data feeds that are coming from all these different places yep. and create some governance and observability on top of that so they can make the decisions they need to make? And I, I, I want to let you, please keep continue, but I really wanted to kind of call that out because I thought it no, was... No, you're spot on. It's yeah. interesting to think yeah. about that way. Absolutely, no, you're spot on. So, essentially, shadow IT was a need of the hour at that time, and now it's actually compulsion, right? So you have cloud practices, practices team within organization now. They're no longer operations team, and these cloud practices are now determining how exactly a cloud practice can run across security, because it's important, the data is moving all over the place, around finances or costing, because it's no longer your own data center, you're running pay as you go and you're having these big bills, and then visibility, as you said, right? 
it's so critical that you have full visibility into that data as well and into your environments as well. So when I talk to customers with these kind of practices, they have been often complaining around, as I said, multiple tools but not getting what they want, especially in this multi-cloud world. And they also complain about how can we stop having agents all over the place from different vendors with different data pro formats and proprietary data, which they spend millions of dollars with professional services or management to manage and do lifecycle management of, and then do transformation when they, they want to view the data in a different tool altogether. All of this kind of gave birth to something called open telemetry. Right? And that is what our dream is. Our dream is to be able to take open telemetry mainstream along with the other big names like Microsoft and AWS and Splunk. It started with a small startup which was acquired by Splunk and that's why Splunk became the number one open telemetry co contributor, but the concept is very simple. If I can emit observability data such as metrics, events, logs, traces through a single collector which can then send that data to any open telemetry proper let me say open telemetry backend which can understand that data and they tr do transformations on top of that data like visualization or like percentiles in case of metrics mm -hmm. or do log analytics in cases of log or go ahead and break down spans into multiple traces which I can visualize to understand where the code is slow in my application. All of that can be done in a single platform or uh, with a single data feed rather than you having to collect or install thousands of agents. The second benefit, which is even more critical, is as you said, now everything is digital, the data is uh, exponentially growing, which means you need to store that data somewhere. Right. And if you're collecting the same data for different use cases multiple times, you have to store it multiple times as well. Why not collect it once, store it once, and use it multiple times for different set of use cases or personas which you have in your environment. Oh, I find that I, I really find that fascinating. I, several topics have come up throughout the day that I think re, like land we can, here. We can sit here for the entire oh, day. the entire day. <laughs> <laughs> um, that really land nicely. One of them, you know, we noticed this here at Cisco. Um, there's a, a big theme here at Cisco Live um, for around sustainability. Mm -hmm. um, from things as simple as we don't give out stickers and swag anymore because we're yep. trying to minimize the footprint. To we have sustainability areas. We show what Cisco's doing. Um, I really appreciate, and I would love to touch on more, is when you're talking about FSO, FSO platform and this ability to you know, uh, connect, in different, yeah, get, connect in different feeds to answer different types of questions, I think it really gets to, depending on the vertical or the industry that a customer is in, mm -hmm. and their business, whatever their needs for that data, it could be sustainable, yep. but they have a lot of other needs that their business, they want to make business decisions based off of, yep. and they're getting so much data. Is that, it, how is FSO platform really like geared towards making those types of decisions? Sure. Um, so FSO platform was born with the need of having full stack observability. So the need came first, of course, as it happens in the world. It does. And obviously to meet that need, Cisco has been working with customers with a bunch of different great acquisitions which we have done. Things like AppDynamics, uh, which has been the number one APM tool in the world. Things like uh, Thousand Eyes, which has actually thousand eyes because it, literally the name is that. It can actually give you that kind of network visibility which I've not seen in any other tool. And I'm not the PM for it, so I'm not claiming that. But I've seen it from customers telling us that yes, we need these tools. I was just with a very big manufacturing customer in Germany and if you know Germany, you'll understand what that customer would be. They were like, App Dynamics has given me visibility or hawk eyes into the application and to get inputs from that application or observe that it would take me days and months to find a root cause. Now I can do that in minutes. So these things give me a lot of happiness, but there are other things or which these customers are talking about. They're saying, hey, I can have all these tools, I can integrate them as well, but still I'm missing the part of having a common context which I can use across all different personas. I'm missing the part of having a single agent which can collect all this data. Yeah. I'm missing the part of saving money and as you said, uh, not wasting resources on storing the same data again and again. And that's where the concept of FSO or full stack observability data platform was born. Um, and yesterday Liz talked about it. She launched the FSO data platform in Tech Preview and I'll kind of unpack this for you um, today and for the audience as well. Essentially when we started thinking about the first application within the Cisco portfolio of FSO, it's AppDynamics, we thought we need to go ahead and start looking at how do we 
go beyond the use case of application performance management. Because customers are now saying, it's great that you tell me that my business transactions are slowing down because there is a application issue. But guess what, a lot of times there is never an application issue, it's an infrastructure issue. It's an issue in the network. It's an issue somewhere in Kubernetes which is new to me and I don't understand it fully. And that's where AppDynamics Cloud was born and we started creating a modern observability tool which can allow you to look from right from businesses down to the cloud infrastructure for all your modern cloud native applications. And I was, as we were building out that uh, solution or software, very quickly we realized that the underpinning architecture of the software allows us to actually create a platform which can be used Cisco-wide, as well as can be used industry-wide to build something which can be a standard for observability. And that's where the Cisco Full Stack Observability was born. The first key premise of the platform was it's based on open telemetry. And as I talked about earlier, open telemetry allows us to make that data standardization which is critical for customers. So today, if you are a customer and you're looking for an observability uh, or a performance management practice or a monitoring practice, depending on what you call it, where in the world, it's important that you have a strategy around open telemetry mm -hmm. because that'll lead you into the future and you don't want to be lagging behind right. for sure. That'll simplify life cycle management, that'll simplify data collection, that'll simplify standardization uh, and make it easy for all the personas to get the same data in different tools if they want to. I would love for everything to in, into my tool, but it's fine if you, if you want to use. It, it, I, I really appreciate you saying both the things you just said. Because it, yes, of course we would love people to use as much Cisco yep. makes as makes sense for them. Mm -hmm. But we recognize that they're not. Yep. They're not. Nobody uses all of one vendor, and that's okay. True. And here in the DevNet zone like that, our prime message for everybody is how can we help everyone learn how to leverage the different sources of technology they have to solve the problems that they need. Yes, can you do a lot of that with Cisco and might you be able to? Absolutely, we would love you to do that. Mm -hmm. But we also recognize that that's not, that is not how the world works. And so I also, I think, it, it, the FSO platform and you know what you're aiming to do with it really plays in nicely to what we want to help people, enable people through DevNet is yep. the, the DevNet program overall is to understand how to solve problems, give them a, a way to do that, but also the flexibility to say, what works for you to solve your problems in your business? That's what we're really all aiming for. Awesome, and this is exactly uh, what the FSO platform is all about. It's no longer about um, creating products which can be created only by Cisco or used only for Cisco specific use cases, but it's about creating a platform where we can have an ecosystem of developers, whether it's a developer within Cisco, whether it's a developer in our partner organization, whether it's a developer in our customer organization, or just an open source developer who wants to build applications on top of a platform which can help with observability. Uh, we call it full stack observability because it comes with the second premise or second key foundational piece which allows us to define relationships uh, between any two things which you're monitoring or any 10 things which you're monitoring. For example, I want to create a relationship between uh, this plant which might be running in Amsterdam, a manufacturing unit, right? It's creating cars. And then I have some IoT devices and sensors. I have some cameras there, which are monitoring whether there is a compliant, or there's compliant followed in order to make a particular part of the car, right? There might be heat sensors, mm -hmm. uh, which are calculating or taking the temperature. All of these are devices which are emitting data. Most of this data is either a metric, an event, a log, or a trace. And that's where open telemetry come into picture. Mm -hmm. If the platform allows you to take any data type, ingest that, we convert it into open telemetry, push it back into the platform, ingest all these different entities or objects, relate them to each other, because you want to know if this camera is not working, which plant it belongs to, mm -hmm. right? which floor it is on. Um, just like if you, an application is not working, you want to know what container it's running on. right? So just a synonymous use case in a completely different domain. Um, that's the entity-centric model, which allows us to have and build a context of what you want. So going back to your point, the ecosystem of developers can solve for their customers' use cases rather than waiting for something coming from Cisco. They can just build and extend what we provide, like App Dynamics Cloud as an application. And something which we just extended is, yeah, we can do Kubernetes monitoring, but guess what? 
Cisco acquired a couple of companies, Opsani and Replex, and they were into Kubernetes optimization. They were into Kubernetes cost management. We immediately leveraged the platform and said, two developers, go ahead and extend and now add metrics about cost coming from an AWS bill on the same Kubernetes cluster without having a different entity. See, you're, you were absolutely speaking my language here. Really Thank appreciate you. it. It's been oh, fantastic having absolutely. you. Absolutely. Thanks Thank everyone you for watching. You can catch all the rest of our information on developer.cisco.com slash Cisco Live. Enjoy the event.